indie television. What is okay, your? Uh, you you heard my affirmative thesis. If you're not familiar with it, that there is no meaningful sense in which someone in the United States can be a communist without also being a MAGA communist. So that's my argument. What is your counter argument? I disagree with that totally. Okay. I believe I believe that uh, communism is incompatible totally with uh, MAGA as a movement. Okay. Why is it? Because uh, MAGA was designed, it was, it was for small government, you know, protecting our borders and capitalism. It was not for communism. It's not, it has nothing to do with communism. Right. Well, if it's for capitalism, why is the MAGA movement so against the big woke corporations? Why shouldn't they just submit to woke corporations then? Well, no, that, that, they're trying to monopolize. They're trying to, uh, that is basically, in my opinion, the government and the corporations are working hand in hand. I agree. And, I agree with that. And, uh, yeah, they, they've, 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 they've taken over. You know, you got the Twitter, you got the yeah. FBI. So what it's do you mean by capitalism by. then? Because to me, that's what capitalism is. No, that's not what capitalism is. That's that's uh, that's that's a mixture of socialism masquerading well, it's, it's as capitalism. It's socialism for the capitalists. It's not socialism for us. We don't benefit from it. They do. They get everything. No, no. I, I mean, um, if, are you familiar with uh, like uh, somebody like Peter Schiff, where he talks about how it's really a lot of socialism socialist policies and they masquerade them as capitalism no They're yeah not. it is but it's it's socialist policies for the capitalists wall street bankers and you know elites it's not for our benefit it's not like they're building canals and dams and new cities for us they're not building socialist mega projects like they did under stalin or in china you know they're they're doing it only to use it as a form of corruption protect monopolies and create red tape so that the actual common people can never prosper. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but that 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 to me is it's a here's the thing, right? It's like fruit of a poison tree. Once you start, once you start inserting a little bit of socialism into what's a what's a what's traditionally a capitalist uh, institution, the capitalism the, it then it's like uh, adding that to the capitalism. So then. That begins to take. Yeah, it, but you realize you realize capitalism created a ruling class, and the ruling class, in order to preserve its power, started to use a lot of socialist policies to stay on top. You know that, right? No, I, I don't know that. I don't believe. I don't. So how do you I believe think this whole thing came to be. I believe it's just greed. That's just. It's a lot of just greed and uh. Sure, but don't you think? Don't, don't you? How do you? So, did we start out as socialism, or did we start out as capitalism? We started out as capitalism. Let's let's use the GI so Bill for did, example. How did capitalism become socialism then? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Yeah. The GI Bill, the GI Bill, right? That was it was developed to help soldiers go to school, right? Are you familiar with it? Yeah, I am. Okay, the government that that is socialism. You insert that into into what's what used to be a cheap college used to be very cheap. Once they inserted that, the capitalist the capitalism capitalism took over. They they realized they could get a handout from the government, so they upped the they upped the tuition. They upped the price, which is which is. But that's not that's not true. If if there was no interference from the government, that wouldn't have happened. Wait, do you know what year the GI Bill was passed? Um, I'm not, I, I, I have a GI Bill, it's something like, I don't remember. I don't know exactly. Because I'm pretty sure the GI Bill, that was in 44, okay? So college was cheap in the 70s. College was cheap in the 60s. The GI Bill, that was World War II. That was in 1944, and it expired in 56. So the <laughs> cheap, nice college people Please. used to enjoy, that was because of color. the GI Bill. Free market capitalism. No, you used to be able to go to college. As you used to be able to go to college to and work, work a job. Yeah, yeah. Like we're talking. We're talking, and we're talking even as early as the seventies. People used to be able to go to college. The problem is actually the opposite. What happened is that the colleges 
started to become mega corporations and it became an industry. And then you had another problem is that all the jobs went overseas. So instead of having well-paying jobs, you know, too many people started going to college and too many people started trying to become professional and that, you know, put a strain on the college industry. And now we have uh, record tuition prices. Yeah, but there's also there's also the government debt. It it what well, I'm yeah, saying I agree. is there's the, these there's are the debt aspect too, but that comes from the Federal Reserve banking system. That comes from the private banking system in the city of London. You know, that comes from the banking system. That's all from you know capitalism. It, here's what I'm saying. I understand what you're saying. I I I, I agree with you. But what I'm saying is the 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 government right now, the United States system right now, is not true capitalism. It is a it's a hybrid and it's not it's not indicative. I, mean, of I, I agree with you, but I'm just trying to say there's a reason we went from A to B. Now, the only way we're if you're talking about a freer market, I agree we should have a freer market and less red tape. But you need to have a strong, not necessarily big, but a strong, firm government that will be able to hold that together, to have the room to have that. Because if you don't have a strong, incorruptible government, then it's just going to be taken over by the richest person. We're going to be back to square one. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, there, we don't. There, we don't there, want the government to take over everything. We just want a simpler government with less regulations and less red tape. And we just want them to take over things like you know the oil industry and things that you can't have a market for. You can't really have a market. For you know these giant you know public utilities and energy and all this stuff, but we also want we just want the government to be much more dynamic too and flexible, and then we want it to promote markets. You know, just China has more of a free market than we do. If you don't know that, I mean, it's easier in China to just start out as a vendor selling stuff on the street. There's no regulations. They don't have the red tape we have here. You can just start out. That's what we want here too. But we also want to ensure that we have a system that serves the people because we're going to have a little socialism either. It's going to be socialism either way. You know, the old days of capitalism where it's all every man for himself, that's not going to happen. No, more. We don't live in that world. So what we need to do is we need to have a communism for the people instead of for the corrupt elites. I understand, but I, I don't believe I don't believe in communism, you know, uh and I don't believe it's compatible with the the core movement of MAGA. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a double Trump voter. I, I think so because MAGA wants to bring the jobs back, doesn't it? Yeah, MAGA wants to bring the jobs back. Well if you want to bring the jobs back, you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to Understand that's something you can only do when you take into consideration the common interest and the commonwealth, right? If you're just if you're just leaving it to profit, it's not going to work. Why? Because the first of all, money's fake from the Federal Reserve. They just print it out. It's not backed by anything. It's just fake. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you there. And then second of all, you know, you can't even make it in this. You know, you will get a glass ceiling if you ever get it so far. And then these hedge funds and Wall Street will approach you and they'll say, hey, you want to go farther? You have to uh, submit to us and do what we say. And if you don't, they'll bankrupt you, you know? So entrepreneurs can't even get, they can't even get um, to the top without joining the establishment, which, you know, usually, honestly, you know, just gobbles up whatever they have and destroys it. So... If you want to bring the jobs back, we need a, a, a government policy. We need an industrial policy that is specifically planned for this goal. It needs to be a plan, an economic plan, right? You can't just, you know, leave it to itself because it's not going to happen then, right? But, but you know, think, as Americans, all every real American wants to have the most amount of freedom possible. I agree with that. We don't want to plan everything. But we need to have an overarching economic plan. We know what we're doing. And then coupled with that plan, maximal freedom and liberty economically for people to improvise and innovate and that, that you know, that great Wild West mentality we have. We want to promote that. But in order to do see, here's the thing. In order for the individual to thrive 
you need a strong community and you need a strong um you need a strong country and if you don't have that the individual will not be able to thrive because you'll just have corporations or you'll have other gangs or warlords you'll have other people take over individuals will not have the space to you know do their own thing Okay, I I understand what you're saying, but here's here's the problem. Here's the problem. Communism. It's it's a loaded term. It's been it's been it's been used before, you know, by people that are were frankly anti-American. They they did not compat. They they were not compatible with American ideals. Uh, China is not compatible with American ideals, and neither was uh, uh the USSR. You know, Venezuela. Everybody who's well, tried communism. But look, Russia had a communism for Russia. China's got a communism for China, and they're all different from so each you, other, right? So you said you said you're going to start an American version yeah, of communism. Yeah, there'll be an American version. And you know, if you look at the history of American communists, we're we are it, we're not told about this history, right? Because you know the media uh, lies to us, and you know that the history books that we're told in public schools, they're all only approved by the very same big, you know, government. You had the FBI with the Red Scare and all that stuff. The truth is, communists in history, in American history, were carrying the legacy of 1776 and the Founding Fathers. And all communists throughout history were pro-American revolution. They praised the history of America. They admired America, what America was. And they were trying to defend our civil liberties. And take World War I. You want to talk about when the Federal Reserve really started taking over? It's right before World War I, a few years before World War I. World War I happens, and Americans don't want to go to Europe to fight a damn war. What does that have to do with us, right? The bankers here tried to do as much propaganda as possible to get us into that war, to go fight the bankers' wars in Europe. And some of the only people who stood up were communists like Eugene Debs. That man ran for president in prison, and he still got a million votes. And he he was put in prison just for speaking out against American troops having to go die in a foreign war for a foreign interest and for you know a ruling class that doesn't care about the what America stands for. Right? To me, that's a real patriot. A real patriot to me is not someone like George W. Bush. Who wants to you know to go to iraq and wants to go all over the world to be and for israel and to be the world police a real american patriot is somebody like eugene debs who stands up to the government and defends our liberties i think that's what the founding fathers would have wanted well here's, here's the thing right we we can always criticize you know george bush you know but at the time i believe i, I believe given the facts he was given at the moment maybe not iraq but definitely afghanistan you know but Here's what I'm saying. Like, you, you talk about revisionist history, but then you know you're like, you know, you're, you're bringing up, you know, your, your communist version of history. You know, who's to say what's the objective version of history is? You know, what actually happened? You know, I mean, if we're going to go I there, recommend everybody do their own research. That's what I recommend always. Yeah, I, I did my own research. You know, I mean, I, and I, I I appreciate your viewpoint. I do, but I and uh, but I I don't believe you know I don't believe it's uh because of because because of what communism stands for it's it's not it, it's not what people who voted for trump were thinking about when they were voting for trump it's, I mean, it's kind I, of I to me a hijack you, i don't i don't think people in this country in general are educated about communism we're not educated about it and there's a reason for that is because the same globalists who the trump the maga people were fighting against you can admit that right they were fighting against the globalists well, yeah, you know, the I, yeah, of course. Who were the ones that started the Cold War and started the crusade about, against communism? And, you know, the USSR and America were friends during World War II. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Stalin were friends. They were good friends. They liked each other. And then what happened is that uh, uh, Roosevelt dies, and the British and the CIA and the globalists. They put Truman in charge, and all of a sudden we hate Russia now. We hate the so we hate communists and stuff. So, a lot of our history that we're I'm, I, I agree, Americans don't really you know when they think of communism, most people are thinking of big government and they're thinking of a scary you know 
totalitarianism. But you got to admit, you know, how do you know it's not propaganda? How do you how do you know that's not what it actually is? You know, because we are fed so many lies about everything. You know, you see how they lie about everything. So what's to say they're not lying about communism, too? So you're saying you're saying in communism, right? You're saying American communism. It wouldn't basically be what the WEF is peddling. Like, you will own nothing and be happy. No, no. As far as I'm concerned. Americans will own much more than ever before. Own farms, own homes. I mean, look at China. It's not going to be China. So I'm not saying this to say, oh, we're going to be like China. I'm just saying China has a 90% ownership rate compared to our, like, 35%. We don't want people to have to rent. We don't want people to have to live in homes owned by the government. We want people to own their own shit. We just don't want the banks to own it, right? So you get what I'm saying. It's not about the government owning it. It's 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 uh it's about the people owning it instead of the banks, because the banks own everything right now. They, I mean, look at truckers. A lot of truckers own their own trucks, but they're in debt because the banks own it, and they gotta pay the banks, right? You know, they gotta pay yeah, the, yeah. the interest. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, you gotta pay yeah. your your uh, more, uh not mortgage your uh. Yeah. Truck note. yeah, it's like the banks own everything. It's, it's it's trucks, it's homes, it's businesses. They own everything. They got everybody by the balls. We have so much debt in this country, and the reason they justify that debt is they say, oh, well, if we forgive the debt, oh, that's going to be communism. And so they're going to, they want to scare the hell out of people about what communism is because the banks want to keep people in debt. We're not trying to, we just want people to own it instead of we just here, here's what I'm trying to say. We want people to own things. We don't want things to own people. We don't want money to own people. We don't want debt to own people. We want people to own it. We and if people own it, that means they're using it for a reason, right? We we're not against people owning things to use things as they please and to do things as they please. We're just against you know people being exploited and we're against banks owning everything. Okay, I understand. But here's the thing about cap here's the thing about our current system. You I've I've watched several guys uh start trucking businesses and you do not have to take that route. It's it's not like uh you have to be uh yeah, supported you don't. to the bank. You could start a business with the cash in your pocket. It'll just take you longer, but you can still get there. Well, it's possible. How many people can get there, right? That's the problem. I've gotten there. I got there. With, I, I started this with five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and I, I got there. I got. I got to making decent money, and I didn't take on any debt. Yeah, but it's you know, possible. I th- I think yeah, it is possible. It's possible to do that with a home as well. It's possible to do that with a lot of other things. The problem is that it's not viable for most people. You know, most people they're not going to be able to do that, right? And also, yeah, the- is, see, credit is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that these banks are predatory, which means they prey on people, and they don't actually have a plan for people to ever pay the debt back. They just do it because they want to capitalize on the debt. And that's what our system is built around, and that's the problem. Credit is not necessarily a bad thing. Now, I would give you an example of this. If you end up being a promising, popular business, you know... If someone wants to invest in that and say, hey, here's a here's a investment or here's a debt for you to go and uh, expand. That's not that's not a, a bad thing. The problem is when you start capitalizing on the interest. That's usury, right? That's the problem. Yeah, usury. Yeah, when they start okay. capitalizing on the interest. Because at that point, you're making money just out of money, not out of hard work, right? That's correct. Yeah, so... That's really the problem is that there's see a lot of people want to be able to prove themselves. And and another thing, too, is that the reason a lot of people take on the trucking job is they want the economic liberty and independence that comes with that. Right. You're right. American citizens who are living in a country whose forefathers fought for our liberty and fought for our freedom. We don't want to be slaves working for, you know, working at fuck, you know, fucking McDonald's for a, a boss and having no freedom in our lives. And we don't want that. Americans don't want that. Why, why uh, the government does so much for these corporations. They do so much for the banks. They do so much. Why don't they do something for the people where 
they're not giving us a handout, but they just give us the chance to start our, on our own two feet and build something with our own two hands, right? Why would that be so hard? Why can't they build better infrastructure? Why can't they build a better market, right? Build a better context for the market, right? They should build cities, for example. When's the last time we had a city built? Never, right? You look at Los Angeles and New York, it's a hellhole. Imagine if we built a new city. How many new businesses could start? How many new people could make a livelihood off of that, right? Imagine if we built infrastructure, we built, revamped our transportation system. I mean, there's so much we can do that could create opportunities for the individual. But instead of doing that, instead of creating opportunities for the individual, the government works its ass off making sure monopolies are happy you know, squeezing out whatever dime they can off of the Federal Reserve printed money that's fake in the first place. You know, so... Yeah. That's okay. what, but that's what communism is, because what communism means is that it's not profits in command. It's the common people in command. The common people are ruling the country. So, and it's Ma and MAGA, you have to admit this too, MAGA may not be communist, at least it doesn't know that it's communist, but MAGA is a movement of common people. It's a common people's interest, right? MAGA says, this we're here, we're the common people. And it's not bought out by the corporations. It's not bought out by the ruling elites. It's common people trying to come together and fight for their common interests, right? Against the Great Reset, against George, uh, Carl Schwab, Soros, and Bill Gates and his depopulation agenda. That to me, that's what communism means. It's it's just that's what it always meant. We were just lied about it too, you know. Let me tell you something. Russia and uh, oh. China had a very they had some ugly things happen in their history, right? But you gotta understand they started out in a different place and they're completely different countries. They started out with brutal monarchies and they were colonized like China was. They had a warlord era. I mean, it was tough there, right? They also had to industrialize from scratch without taking any British loans and without having any access to the technologies from the West. So of course they had a rocky head start, but at the end, you know, at the end of it, the Russians managed to build something out of nothing, right? So Churchill said, Stalin, he came to the Russia where they, you know, they had wooden wagons and he left Russia with nuclear weapons. Mao, same thing, right? China was the most backward shithole you can imagine. By the time Mao left, they had a national industrial system. They were producing some mo some of the most iron and steel in the world. They, you know, they had a, a they had a type of economy that could feed people, have medicine, educate people, just the bare bones and the basics. Now, Americans, we're starting out from a different place. We're not going to have to. We don't have to do all of that. We don't have to go from being, you know, in the backwoods to an industrial country. That's an ugly process. It always has been everywhere, right? I mean, here in America, mm -hmm. we had the Wild West, we had the Indians, we had all this crazy shit happen to become civilized like how we are now, right? That's in the past. We're not going back to that. So we're already a wealthy, prosperous country. Why don't we have a government that works for the people? That's what I'm saying. So I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. The COVID, the COVID protocols, the... You had to take a shot. You wouldn't describe that as communism. You wouldn't describe that mm -hmm. as like I would not. No, uh, I would describe authoritative that as the dictatorship overreach. of big pharma. That's big pharma. So big pharma, you know, they're doing it. Ultimately, it goes back to the banks. But big pharma. Well, I don't. You know, I'm on YouTube right now, so I really can't talk to that. You no. Know I, okay. All right. Yeah. I, we'll, we'll we'll go to a different subject. No, 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 I, I'll what just I'm hint, saying I'll is, I'll hint at it though, because I'll just okay. Go yeah, ahead. I'll hint go at ahead. it. But basically. Speaking of big pharma, you know, that, that, um, they have technologies, special ones that were not allowed in China. And that's why China was doing the lockdowns because they were not accepting those technologies from American big pharma because the Chinese didn't trust those technologies. Right. So it's God. awfully suspicious, you know, because and we're looking at new reports. I'm sure you're familiar with everything that's going on with that. We can't get, really get into the details, but I'm, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with what's going on when it comes to the after effects and how a lot of people had lied about it and the CDC and stuff. But we're not. We can't really get into it. 
But no, I don't I don't think that's communism because if it was communism, uh it would be based on the people's interests. Right? And I'll give you an example of that. So China had these lockdowns. I'm sure you're familiar with them, right? Mm -hmm. So China had those lockdowns in place, really harsh ones. And then people started saying in China, hey, this is bullshit. We don't want this, right? So what did the Chinese government do? They said, all right, that's what the people want. We're going to go with what the people want. And they opened up. And now the Western media is saying China is so bad... Everyone's dying of COVID in China because they're opening up. But China, the reason China opened up is they're not going to force something against the Chinese people's will. They don't want, right? Whereas yeah. you look at what happened here, something was forced against us to serve, you know, the big capitalists, or you, you can call them the big uh, socialist capitalists, if you want to call them that, <laughs> It's you know. It, it, I don't. I, I believe there. I believe it's it's really socialism masquerading as capitalism. I don't believe that the 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 way that the state is set up right now, it's actually even really capitalism. I believe they're really socialists. They're really down with a globalist agenda, and yeah, to me, they're you almost. Understand um, that has its origins in something called the City of London. Now, the City of London is a network of private banks. That, I'm familiar with it. It's yeah, like yeah. A they started out on a for-profit basis. So that's why we call it capitalism. Now, I agree with you. We don't have a capitalist market, a free market. And also, things for us are not able to be on a for-profit basis, right? But at, at the root cause of it, you are looking at profit is still driving this network of you know banks, central banks in the city of London, the Federal Reserve, it's a it's a it's a form of profit that's no longer based on hard work, but it's still a form of profit that they're making. The, see, the government works for their profit instead of our interests. Because if they work for our interests, they would build real things and they would promote real hard work, you know, instead of just promoting and printing money. They're printing money because there's a select few people that are profiting off of this. So our society is actually based on profit right now, right? So some way, I, I believe it's more based on power than profit. It's both. It's both. Their power is in the form of the profit, right? So our society is based on the profit of an elite few, even though we do have a socialistic system, but that socialistic system only serves the profits of the elite few. Okay, I understand what you're saying. All right, yeah. But here, here, here's, here's from my viewpoint as a, as a MAGA voter, I believe we're already pretty much. You're saying you want to start a MAGA communism, and I believe MAGA was basically against communism, this global form of communism that already exists. That you know, MAGA or whatever socialism, well, I'll, I'll whatever you want to call it. I think MAGA should adopt communism because. This is why. At the end of the day, what communism is actually about is it's about the working class. Now, we're against globalism. We're against the globalists and their globalist socialism, right? But at the end of the day, MAGA is about the working class. And because MAGA is about the working class, sorry, but, and because communism is about the working class, we're saying MAGA is being hijacked right now. Ron DeSantis is, you know, coming from left field. Trump, he's not going... Trump doesn't have his own... I mean, Trump just endorsed Kevin McCarthy again for speakership. And as far as the direction of MAGA is concerned, there's all sorts of predators that are coming to try and corrupt it. I mean, even Trump's presidency, a lot of special interests, uh, you know, had Trump by the balls. You know, Israel, all that stuff. So if it's based in the working class, people who earn through hard work, if it's based in their interests, then it won't be based in the interests of the capitalist elite. It'll be based in the working people. So MAGA sh should be by, for, and of the interests of the working man. And to me, that is what communism is. I disagree with you there because here's the thing, right? If you're if you're a communist country, 
your your ultimate goal is to go global. If you go global, you solve a lot of the a lot of the issues that the former uh, Soviet Union and all mm-hmm. these other common states ran into. You've got to go global. So to me, the powers that be, they've already at the very top level, they've already gone communist and i believe the reason why trump is getting so much flack is because he was not with the the communist agenda the the whatever we want to call it whatever the globalist well that 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 is true for trotsky so there is a guy named leon trotsky right so when russia had a rebel a communist revolution can you still hear me yeah i can still hear you i'm familiar with trotsky froze a little bit well you just let me know when you when you can't hear me anymore uh, I'll let you know. Yeah. So Russia had a communist revolution, and they had a guy named Leon Trotsky. So Russia, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I so hear you. Russia had a communist revolution, and there was a guy named Leon Trotsky. And tr- what Trotsky said was that it's got to go global, right? It's got to be the we got to take take over. We, this whole thing has got to be the whole world. And he collaborated with the British intelligence because you know there was already a British Empire. The British Empire was global, right? Yeah. We fought to be free of the British Empire. So Trotsky was an agent of the British and all these other people. So that was Trotsky, but Trotsky was kicked out by Stalin because Stalin said, you know, Trotsky, he's just serving the British. He's just serving the ruling class. He's not serving the working people of Russia. They don't want to have to go global. They want to focus on their own issues. So Stalin said it's socialism in one country, not global, right? And then that's the version of communism that was in China and most of the rest of the world, North Korea even. So that's the one I'm talking I'm But here's the thing about Trotsky. I agree with some of what you're saying because Trotsky's followers in America, a lot of them took power. Now, we went to the Iraq war because some of these people like Irving Kristol, they were Trotskyists, com- former Trotskyists, they claim, right? And they wanted to go around the world waging wars to create that, you know, global system, which is really just the new British Empire. And, uh, but that's, that's, you know, that's just serving the British Empire. That's not really, that's not the communism we saw in history. That's just, uh, you know... That's their version. Yeah, yeah, and I, I believe I believe that the ideological, you know, the strains of the ideology, they've you know they've branched a lot, but they're all basically coming together. If you kind of get what I'm saying. Well, I mean, uh, Trotsky, he, you know, he was killed by Stalin. He was yeah, Stalin. Yeah, he you know, he in Mexico. To, Stalin killed that guy because he was you know he was a menace. He was a bad bad guy. So here, here's basically what I'm saying, right? I think. The choice is either the globalist socialism or a communism in one country, like Stalin said. And that's what I think MAGA communism is. It's, a, it's for one country. It's not for the whole world. It's for America. And it's for only America. I understand what you're saying. I, 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 believe, I believe that that's basically impossible. Because we have a global supply chain, so you're going to have to... We should we should have relationships with other countries based on agreements and deals instead of a, a British empire, which is at the gunpoint. Because that's not the American way. Americans don't believe in that way. We want, we want a firm handshake, and that's how we want to negotiate our relationship to other countries in the world. Okay, well, we we just have to agree to disagree, but it was nice talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, I guess. it. Nice talking. All right.